Hi everyone, welcome to Puddinwood Avenue. My name is Bindi. So today I'm going to give you a tutorial on how to make this lovely little hand towel. It is made out of Lion Brand yarns, comfy cotton blend. Today we're going to be using this colour here to match our dishcloth that we made in the last video. Um, this is called Blueberry Muffin. Uh, I absolutely love the colour. Uh, you can make, make this out of any cotton yarn. Um, this says it's a three, number three lightweight a DK yarn. Um, I kind of think it's a little thicker than that. It's probably a light weight fall, really. Um, it is, there are 358 meters of yarn in here. It's 200 grams. This is totally machine washable and dryable. So throw it in the washing machine, throw it in the tumble dryer, put it back in the kitchen and you're off and running again. Um, it is 50% uh, cotton and 50% polyester, this yarn. Um, I really do like it. I love the feel of it. It's lovely and soft. It um, absorbs moisture really well. It dries really well. The only thing I'm not sure about it is it's a little bit splitty as you would have seen in the last video. But it works up beautifully. So this is the blue version. And we're going to make uh, the purple version today. So things that you will need are the uh, cotton of your choice. Again, I'm using the Lion Brand Yarns um, Comfy Cotton Blend. You will need a size 5 crochet hook. I am using a, um, a slightly bigger hook size than I did for the washcloth, the dishcloth, because I want a little bit more drape and fall to it. This actually recommends to use a 6mm hook. I've done that in, a, in another project and I didn't particularly like the way that the bigger hook split the yarn. Um, so I'm going for a five. You will need um, a darning needle to sew in your ends at the end. You will need um, a needle and thread to sew on a button. I haven't decided what button I'm going to use for at the end of this yet. Uh, and of course, a little pair of scissors. Once you've got all of your equipment ready, I'm throwing bits and pieces everywhere. Well, I'll bring you down closer and we'll get started on how to do the table. Nope the hand towel oh my gosh it's been a, la a big couple of days but I'm very excited to show you this so let's go down to the table and I'll show you how to do this okay now we're down here at the table here are the things that we're going to need again we're going to need your cotton yarn I'm using isn't that a beautiful color I love it uh, low brand yarns comfy cotton blend uh, you will need a five millimeter hook Try not to get the glare on there. Five millimeter hook. Sorry, I get that out of your eyes. A pair of scissors, a darning needle, a button. I haven't decided what color I'm gonna use yet. I kind of like that one, but we'll see what happens at the end. Um, a um, pair of scissors, a sewing needle, and some thread, of course. And let's just jump in and get going. Now, this is the same. Um, stitch as we used in our dishcloth because of course we want them to match so what we're going to do um, we've got a bigger size hook and we're going to do a um, hand towel so we're going to do more chains so um, see this is the part thing I don't like about this yarn it's it splits and actually separates from each other okay Let's pretend that didn't happen, let's start again. Okay, so we're gonna start with a slip stitch, a slip knot on our hook, and we're going to do 44 chains. Pause the video here to do your 44 chain. Okay, lucky I checked because I only had 34, it just didn't look long enough. All right, now I've got the right amount, 44. We're going to jump straight into our um, re repeat rows. So we're going to go into the second chain on our hook, from our hook. So we never ever count this one here. The one on our hook is not a completed chain, not a completed stitch, so it doesn't count. So we're going to skip one and we're going to go into this second one. And we're going to single crochet into the top of that stitch. One. And into the next stitch, we're going to do a double crochet. So yarn over, into the top of that stitch. Yarn over, pull through two. Yarn over, pull through two. 
Okay, so we're just going to go right the way across, single double, single double, all the way across until we get out to the end and this is going to be the basis, our foundation row, which will guide us into where we're going to work the stitches in the next row. So just single, double, single, double, all the way across. Nice and steady to start with, just so that we um, making sure that we've got the right stitches in the right places because it's going to be very important in the next row if we don't get it right. So we've had some little ducks in, ducklings inside for the last couple of days. They are hilarious. They keep escaping out of the cage because what we've got them in inside is actually a big dog crate. <laughs> um, uh, and we have had other little duckies in there before. Uh, and yeah, they always get out. But these guys, because there's seven of them, they are just into mischief all the time. They're sleeping at the moment, hiding in their box. Uh, and they are just noisy, rowdy, runabout, <laughs> eating me out of house and home already and they're only a couple of days old, oh my gosh. But they are so fun and I've only got them for a few days because um, just once I make sure that they're, they're doing okay, I'll, um, I've got some people lined up who will come and buy them off me. So um, I just really enjoy having them around for the first few days of their life. And if I really could, if I could keep them, I would. There's a gorgeous little dark one, like he's almost, he or she, almost black and a lovely colored and patterned caramel one. Um, but I, I can't keep them. I've, I've already got seven adults down the, down the paddock down there. So, oh goodness. <laughs> I'd love to keep them, but I'd be in so much trouble. All right, so I'm just going to keep going. I'll meet you back when we get to the end. Oh, I'm nearly there. I might just speed this last part up. Okay, we're coming to the end here. We should have a double crochet in the second last stitch and a single crochet in the last stitch. So that is our first row all the way. Now, just the same as on our dishcloth, you will notice that we have, well, let's start from the end. We have a, a short stitch and a long stitch, a short stitch, a long stitch. So the short stitch is our single crochets, the long stitch, the like twisty looking one is our double crochets. So the next row, we're actually going to, um, if it's a double crochet, single crochet into the top of it. If it's a single crochet, a short one, we're gonna do a double crochet into it. And that's what's going to call, um, create the lo lovely um, textured effect for this stitch. So. On every second row, however, even though we're about to start with a single crochet, so we're gonna chain one first and turn our work. And we start and end every row with a single crochet. So single crochet into the first stitch. Every second row, so every even row, 
because it's a single crochet here first, uh, a double crochet, we have to do two single crochets. So one here and one in the next stitch. So all of our even rows will have start with two single crochets. Okay, you can see that that one's a short stitch, so we need to do a double crochet in there. And so we're just going to continue this across. So double, so we can see we've got a double here, we're gonna do a single into the front of it. I just need to take my bracelet off from sitting here at the table like this. Ugh. Okay, leaning hard against the table. So we've got a short stitch next, so we need to do a double crochet. Double crochet is next, so we need to do a single crochet into the top of that one. And when I say into the top, we're looking for our V stitches and we need to make sure that we go underneath both of those. So the next one is a short one. Hang on, what have I done? Too busy looking ahead, surely. Okay, so I've just done a double. I've got a double crochet here, we need to do a single, and that's exactly what I said, but it's not what I did. Okay, so double crochet. And we're just going to go all the way across, just the same as um, our last one. So single, double, single, double, single, double. Making sure, of course, that you're going into the top of the stitch and we're getting both um, parts of the V of the stitch. <coughs> and a single. All right, I'm gonna, we're gonna speed up. We'll meet you at the end of the row. So you can either pause me here or um, let it run and um, I'll be back to talk to you in just a second. Okay, so we're almost at the end. We've got a double crochet in here. And then we've got two stitches left. Don't miss the one on the end or you're gonna be short and your edges won't be straight. So single crochet into this one here. And then we've got one stitch left. You can see the V on the end. Make sure you get that last stitch. So row two starts and ends with two single crochets. Okay, row three is very easy, it is a um, chain, turn it, and we are literally just going to go single, double, single, double all the way across till we get to the other side and then we're going to change colours. So single crochet to start, we're on an odd row, we can see that it's a single crochet here so we're going to do a double into it. <coughs> and we're just going to continue all the way across. You should have 44 stitches. No, I lie, 43 stitches at the end. We started with 44 um, and we want to end, and, we, and because we use that as a turning chain down here, we've got 43 stitches and that's where we're going to go from here on in. It's always, always 43 stitches. I'm gonna, oh, goodness gracious me. See, I can't talk and crochet at the same time. Um, so I'm going to keep going, you keep going too, and I will meet you back almost at the end of row three, and then we'll do our colour change. Okay, we're almost here at the end of row three. I need to do a double crochet into this one here and we're going to end with a single crochet in here. Okay, so here is my weird little knot that I like to do. I think it's called a magic join, I'm not really sure. So I'm just gonna do that to make sure that I've got enough yarn of the purple. I'm gonna hold it here, I'm gonna pull a couple of stitches out and I'm gonna give it a little snip just past my thumb here, snip. Okay. We're going to take the blue yarn and we're going to join it. So what we're going to do, I have to pull a, no, nope, whoa, don't join it to the um, beginning tail. <laughs> it's not the first time I've done that, you know. All right, 
So we're going to join our purple and our blue together. So we're going to take the blue, doesn't matter which one you do first, it really doesn't. And I'm just going to tie a granny knot, capturing that purple yarn in the middle. And I'm going to tighten it and I'm going to pull it really tight. Then I'm going to take my purple yarn, I'm going to have to slide it through. And I'm going to do the same thing, just going to tie a granny knot with the blue yarn coming through the middle. And I'm going to get that as close as I can to where I, my stopping point is. And I'm going to pull that really tight and I just catch my tension. And then I'm going to pull those two pieces of yarn together and I'm going to pull it really tight. Now be careful if you're doing that with wool or um, certain acrylics because they will unravel the yarn, but cotton is quite strong. So it's not going to cut that as close to that knot as you possibly can but always, always test it. Because sometimes it will still come apart. That is not going anywhere. Okay, so let's jump onto row number four. Okay, so I'm just going to just fix up the last couple of these stitches that we pulled out. Can you hear the duckies peeping? <laughs> They've all just woken up. Okay, so our knot is going to get hidden in, in underneath our um, stitch here. And we're going to do a chain, turn our work, and now we're just going to do a single crochet into every one of these stitches. So straight up, we're just going to single crochet into the first one. The first one can be a little tight though because that knot is involved, but the knot's inside, you can't see it. You guys stay inside your pen. They keep escaping. Okay, so we're just going to single crochet all the way across. You should have 43 stitches at the end of each row. So it's just a simple single crochet all the way across. Chain one, turn your work, single crochet all the way across. Chain one, single crochet all the way across. And then we'll change back into our purple yarn. So, these rows are the easy peasy rows because they're just all single crochets. Nothing too hard to think about. All right, so I will continue with this. I'm hoping that you will too and I will see you back at the end of row number six, which will be the three rows of single crochet. Okay, so here we are almost at the end of our three rows of single crochet, which will take us to the end of row six. Okay, now in this particular pattern um, as well, this project, something that I should have told you at the beginning is, you, if you've got a row counter, then grab one. Otherwise, grab a book, um, and a pen and do some tally marks because we're about to embark on 43 rows of um, uh, We're going to get to row 43 before we start taking it into the beginning of the Decreases to make the top of our towel So this is the end of row six. So we're going to change back to our main color So again, I'm going to put my finger here I'm going to pull a couple of stitches out and give it a snip and then we can get rid of that blue yarn until we get right up to the top. So I'm just going to fling that over there, sorry, I went to fling that over there and I went to fling you as well. Okay, so we're going to join our purple back to our blue. So we're going to tie a granny knot around our blue yarn with the purple like that and give it a really tight pull we're going to tie our blue around our purple like that and pull that really really tight as well and we're going to just pull that together 
until they're really, really close. And we're going to trim that up close to the knot as we possibly can so we've got no fuzzy bits sticking out. And this side here as well. Okay, and always, always give it a pull because sometimes it will come apart. Not very often. That knot is secure. Okay, let's throw those couple of stitches back into that last row. Gee, I pulled a few out this time, didn't I? And then we're going to start onto our, the big part of our body. There's my washing machine that's finished. It's gonna beep a few times behind us, but that's okay. The ducks are running around like absolute lunatics, jumping up at the box and pecking the box. I don't know why. Okay, so we're here at the end of row six. We've got our colour change happening here. You should have 43 stitches across. So we're going to chain one, turn our work, and because it's an odd row, we're going to start back into our repeat of single, double, single, double, single, double, all the way across. So into that first stitch, we're going to single, and double into the next one. And single. And double. Single. <coughs> Don't bark. And double. <coughs> But mum, there's another dog barking up the road somewhere. Single and double. And we're just going to comp keep going all the way across. I'll meet you till we get almost to the end of row number seven. Okay, so we are almost to the end of round seven. Not round seven, row seven. And this is where it's going to be very, very important to keep track of the number of rows or the row number that you're on. So we're going to chain one, turn our work. So that's row seven. Now you could, of course, use a um, bunch of tally marks. I'm just flicking through my book here. Um, I sometimes I use tally marks. Uh, can I find any? There we go. Sometimes I use tally marks, sometimes I um, use my handy dandy uh, tally counter. So there's lots of different versions of these things available um, around the traps. Um, I've got a few of these and I really, really like them. So I'm going to get up to five, six. We've just done row seven and we're about to start row eight. Okay, so row eight, because it is a even row, we're going to start with our two single crochets. One, two, and then we're just going to complete our double crochet into the next one. Single crochet, double crochet, single crochet. So just continue with this pattern, remembering of course that all even rows start and end with two single crochets and odd rows just have one at the beginning and the end. Now we're going to continue this um, pattern for until we have completed 43 rows. So it's really, really important that you um, keep track of what row number of rows you have done um, because once we've hit 43 which will make our hand towel actually square because we've done 43 across and 43 high so it's going to be square and that is the cool part where we then take it from 43 stitches down to 9 stitches in just a few rows so that we can start with our handle and how we hang it up with our little button and buttonhole. So 
I like to make, I like to press my, um, my count button on my counter as I start a new row. Some people do it when they finish a row. Um, I confuse myself when I do it like that. So as I start a new row, I press the button so it shows the row that I'm on. Um, it's funny though, because when I use tally marks, I actually do a tally mark at the end of the row. Who knows how my brain works sometimes, seriously. Okay, so we're just going to finish the end of row eight. I'm really quite excited to show you how, um, how this goes from this wide to this wide. <laughs> uh, and it's quite fun to see, to be honest. Um, I'm up to that in the um, tea towel topper that I am doing. I'm almost up to the um, tiny part. <laughs> um, and to see it, the decreases is kind of fun to watch watch it happen and again too the counting things I I love the counting to making sure that I decrease in this one and you know I, I just I don't know I really enjoy it crocheting is great for mindfulness and it's the small things in life right counting how easy is that all right so we're almost at the end of row eight which is a an even row. So we're going to end on two single crochets. If I've done it right. <laughs> okay. Nearly there. So that's a double and I've got two left. One, two, oh, sorry, off camera. One, two, so I know that I have done it right all the way across. So one and two. Seriously, the memory on my phone, my cameras, um, is just ridiculous. Okay, so we've just gotten to the end of row eight. We're gonna chain one, turn our work and hit our button on our counter. So we're now starting row number nine and we're just going to single crochet, double crochet, single crochet, double crochet all the way to the end and we're going to complete that and I will catch up with you when we get to the end, almost to the end of row 43. So keep on going, slow and steady wins the race and I will catch up with you at row 44. Okay, my lovelies, we are almost at the end of row 43, so I'm just going to end up with a double crochet and a single crochet. That is row 43 done and dusted. All right, I love this pattern. Sorry about bumping the. I love the pattern, I love the, the yarn. The feel of the stitch is amazing. Um, all right, so here's my, we have just completed row 43. We're about to start row 44. So we're going to end up in the next few rows, we're going to go from 43 stitches down to nine. So let's see how we're going to get this going. So press our button. So we've got row 44 and we're going to chain one and turn our work. Now my, I'm just going to stop here for a setup for a second. My setup's a bit squishy. Okay, let's try this. So row 44, we are going to single crochet two together all the way across 21 times. So to do that, so and we, we kind of want it together, and then um, it's going to start shrinking it down. So we're going to go from, um, yep, yeah, single crochet two together 21 times. So how we do that is we're going to go into our first stitch, capture our yarn and pull it through, go into our next stitch, capture our yarn and pull it through. We've got three loops on our hook, 
yarn over and pull it through all three. So that's taking those two stitches and turning them into one. Okay, so we're going to do that all the way across. So we've got done that one, so we're going to go into this and capture our yarn, into the next stitch, capture our yarn, yarn over and pull through all three. Okay, so we're just going to continue this all the way across. So um, it's taken me a couple of days to um, on and off to get this done. And yesterday we went to a friend's house and um, David, Mr. David and um, his friend pulled out a great big tree stump um, and I was able to get the rest of this done so I can do this today. But I got absolutely smashed, smashed with midgy bites. Oh my goodness. So um, I am severely allergic to anything bitey. bitey. I flare up something crazy. <laughs> Let me see my arm. I'm covered in, um, in calamine lotion. Um, and if I could find my antihistamines, I think I'll take one of those. But if I have one of those, then I'm going to have to go to sleep. So I wanted to get this done. It's all happened here in the last few days. So my little ducklings that we've got inside here. So we had seven, had seven, are now down to six. We think um, the other night something got in, maybe a snaky, because Maynard was um, in the corner here where the little ducks live and was not barking, but he was onto something and I got up and that was, it was like really early, two o'clock or something in the morning. And um, had a bit of a look around and I couldn't see anything, but he was definitely onto the scent of something. And then in the morning, one of the little duckies were not alive and had a little bit of blood on its back. So something bit it, something got it. So we're down to six ducklings um, inside here. Um, it's hard work. I've got um, eggs in the incubator over here that are just not doing anything. I'll candle them and check them out later on today. But the really sad thing is, really weird, oh, I only did one then. The really weird and sad thing is, what did I do? Um, is my favorite duck. My lovely little brown, she was one of the first ones we got. She can be hand fed and comes when you call her and she's been sitting on her own little nest. And I've gone down this morning and she is a nowhere to be seen. So we're at the end of this row, row 44, and we've got one stitch left, which is our single crochet. So we're going to do one single crochet in the end of that. And now we should see a little bit of a, a gather, a little bit of a bulgy starting. So that's row 45. So what we're gonna do now is we're going to go to row 40, row 45, there we go. And we're going to chain one and turn, just like we've always done. And we're going to go back the other way. And we're going to uh, two single crochet together all the way across 11 times. So exactly what we've just done in the last row, into that stitch capture, into that stitch capture, three loops on your hook, yarn over and pull it through. And we're just going to get it, go that all the way across. So yes, my brown, there's been, her nest is intact. Um, I, she had at least half a dozen eggs underneath her. And all I can see is a couple of broken eggshells out in the garden near where her nest was. But her nest is intact, so it doesn't look like there's been a struggle there at all. And I can't find her. I've been out there, I've been, and any sign of her or ducklings, feathers, blood, anything, can't find anything like that. So I don't know where my darling brown is. I'll go out there and have another look for her as well. I'll be really, really sad if something's happened, if she's disappeared because I love that little ducky. She was gorgeous. 
And then as I walk, point down to the ducks first because I wanted to go and um, check on brown. What's going on here? Um, I wanted to go and check on brown and um, as I walked past the chicken coop, I thought one of my, my, I thought my silky rooster was cactus on the floor as well. Yep, I messed up over here somewhere. But no, he was just tricking, he was just laying down having a rest. It's like, thanks mate, you scared me for nothing. So, oh, it's an adventure here. And again, like I said, every time I go to um, jump on here, my neighbour decides he's, um, my neighbour decides he's going to mow. And that's what's happening. So I'm hoping you can't hear that. <laughs> I'm having an issue, one and two. The video stopped and didn't show you the end. So what we're going to do is we're going to two single crochet together and then we're going to finish with a uh, single crochet at the end of the row. Okay, so we're about to start row 45 and we're going to do exactly the same as what we did in the last row. So we're going to chain one. I'm sorry, and turn, my, turn your work, I've already turned my work. And we're going to do two double, two single crochets together all the way across. One. Ain't crawling on me. <clears throat> so yes, I'll go down and I'll have a look for my beautiful brown and her ducklings. They must have hatched because she was. They were due to hatch either yesterday um, or today. And maybe as a good mummy, she's they've she's taken them somewhere safe and is hiding somewhere and if that's the case she's hiding really well because I can't find her. So I'll be really really sad if something's happened to my brown. She's a lovely little duck. So we'll see what happens. Life with animals. So we've got our one here, single crochet. We're going to chain one, turn our work. And so we're going to go to number 46. And we're going to, same thing. Oh, uh, no, actually, actually, we're not doing the same thing. I lied, I tell, tell a fib. Okay, what we're gonna do is we're going to single crochet into the first one. And then we're going to do a single crochet two together. We're only going to do one of those. And then we're going to do five um, single crochets. So one, two, three, four, five. Now the gaps are really big, but that's okay. It'll be fine. So one, two, three. Four and five, and then we're going to two together. Oh, hang on, I've got a ply cord here. I'm going to go to two together, and then we're going to go two together. Okay, so you can see that we've got a pretty little pattern happening at the top up here, and we're very, very um, short. So, I'm going to chain one. We're going to go to row, oh, where is it? 47. I'm going to turn our work, and we're going to go back to our pattern. So single crochet into the first one, even though it's a big, big space, that's okay. We're going to single crochet and double crochet into the next one. Single crochet into the next one, 
double crochet into the next one single crochet into the next one double crochet into the next one single crochet into the next one double crochet into the next one and single crochet into the last one okay so that's going to be the width now when you turn around make sure you don't come down into here make sure you only go into the top of the that stitch there don't come come down here into the turning chains okay so that's row 47 so row 48 I'm gonna hit the button there row 48 throw my um, counter on the table and because it's an even row so we're gonna chain one and turn because it's an even row just the same as we've been doing down here sorry fashion you around um, we're going to do two single crochets first. So single, single, and double into the next. And then we're back into single, and double, single, double, Single. And because again it's an even row, we're going to do two. So, and single. Don't forget this, it's hard to see, but there is one stitch still there. This is the turning chain. Okay? So, single and single. Okay. So, we're going to keep doing this until. Um, we're going to get 68 rows, we're going to get to row 68, but um, on row 64 we're going to change our colours. So I'll do it again, we'll do a couple more rows, so uh, chain, I couldn't think of what the word was, chain one, turn our work, and we're just going to continue the pattern that we've done down here, we're going to continue that for our handle at the top. So we're on 49, so we're going to single into the first one, you can see that that one's a single so we're going to double into that, <coughs> and single, and double, single, and double and single and double and last one of the row single so let's see how many stitches do we have here <coughs> excuse me we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So you should have nine stitches um, to go across all the way up until row 64. So we're now on row 50, which is chain out, do a chain, turn our work. I find it easier now to, because it's, it's getting quite heavy, I find it easier now to rest it on a table if you can. Um, I don't normally sit at this table to crochet, but it's much easier. So row 50, so it's an even row. So we're going to... <laughs> Main, I just got up and the little ducks are like, oh my gosh! So we're going to do two single crochets to start, and then in our single crochet in the previous row, we're going to do our double crochet. And a single double single double and of course but then we're going to end with our two singles one in here and there's our V one in here okay chain one turn our work hit the row count 
51 and go again all right so pause the video here catch up with me when we are at row 64 we'll do our color change together and then our last couple of rows our last ooh, we've got three rows after that um, and I'll include the but how to do the buttonhole in that as well so keep going my lovelies I'll see you shortly Okay, my lovelies, we've just finished row 62, row 63. Look at our nice, nice, evenly edged little handle here. So I've chained one, I'm gonna turn my work. Row 63 and then row 64, we're going to change our colors so that um, we've got our blue stripes happening. So I hope you found this pattern fun. I this is my second um, hand towel that I've made now uh, and I absolutely love it. I'm actually going to take this one into school and I'm going to make another one probably without the blue stripe. Uh, we'll see what happens. Um, so that um, I've got one at work and I bring it home and wash it and I've got another one there. So, alright. I've got into the wrong place there. And okay, so we're about to change our colours to a blue, so I'm just gonna do that stitch. I'm gonna hold my yarn, pull a couple of stitches out and trim it, give it a snip. Snip. Okay, grab my blue from over here. And we're going to do that. Just going to make my end even. Snip. Make my end even. And we're going to attach our yarn. So I'm just going to tie a granny knot over the top of the purple with the blue. Get it nice and tight. And I'm going to pull and do the same thing, a granny knot over the blue with the purple. And pull it tight. Apparently if I can grab the yarn and then pull the two pieces together a really tight pull make sure it's attached snip off really really close man it's hot here today it's been getting really really hot until about one o'clock and then the temperature just drops so by about two o'clock we've been getting thunderstorms so Alright, so our blue's attached. Let's go back and redo these couple of stitches that we took out. <clears throat> now, of course, if you've got a different way of attaching, changing colours, go with your system. It's all good. So we're going to hide that knot in, in underneath that stitch in between. Oh, it's come out, but it's fine. We're going to chain one. And we're going to turn our work. And now we're going to do three rows of single crochet. So let's go. So row 64 is our colour change and we're just going to single, cro single crochet across. Grab that little knot, get him tucked into here so it doesn't affect our edge. And we're just going to single crochet across our nine stitches. Thank you. 
like I said, I've really enjoyed making this. I've never, I've never made a hand towel before. So this pattern is, um, has worked up really, really well. I think I worked out that the stitch I'm doing is a lemon peel stitch. Um, I'm not 100% sure. <laughs> <coughs> okay, so we've changed one, turn our work. We're on to now row 65. Just single crochet back all the way across. So I'm about to show you too how to do a buttonhole. Um, so we've got uh, a little buttonhole for our closure. Once we've got it hanging up. And eight and a nine. It's a little tight because we've got that knot in there. Chain one, turn our work, click the button. Row of single crochet across and we'll change our yarn again. We've got the blue coming from the other direction so it's sitting underneath. Okay. Um, I've been using, I tried to make no, I didn't try, I did. I made a round scrubby with the, with the, in the blue, with the yellow um, scrubby cotton from Red Heart. And I hate it, I hate it, I hate it. So I'm not sure what I'm gonna do with that scrubby yarn, but I seriously, I'm not impressed. Maybe it's the fact that it's yellow that stands out, but it's hard to do the stitches. I've never used, never actually seen scrubby yarn in person before ever. So, all right, so there's our three rows. So I'm just gonna yeah, hold that, pull a couple of stitches, give that a snip, get that blue yarn right out of the way. Okay, so we're going to join our, oh, it doesn't really matter, we're going to join our purple back onto our blue, so it's just a granny stitch in the purple around the blue, and a granny stitch of the blue around the purple. And pull that ends. Make sure that that's not twisted in there and pull that out and pull that really tight and we're going to snip off those ends really really close to the knot oh there's a nice breeze coming in that door now that's really good okay give an extra make sure that it's secure Let's finish our last couple of stitches that we pulled out. Oh, I pulled out half a row, didn't I? <laughs> okay, so single crochet to the end. I have so many patterns that I keep coming across that I want to try. But oh, Well, you've seen how many whips I've got. It's not going to start me from stopping a new one. All right, so we're into our purple, our knot's hidden in here. So we're going to turn our work. All right, so we're going to go back and start our pattern. So we're going to click our button. So we're on to 67. So it's an odd row, which means we're just going back straight into the first um, this first repeat so it's just a single crochet in the first one and a double crochet and a single and a double single and a 
<laughs> what did I do? Sorry, I got distracted. My mum's just sent me an email, uh, a message. And a double. Single. And you know you're right because you're ending on a single. You know you're right because you're going to end on a single crochet. And single crochet into that last one. That is row 67 done. So chain one, click our button, and we're going to turn our work. It's going to go and turn my washing machine off so it's not beeping in the background. Okay, I'm back. I thought I'd just check that message from Mum, and it's not a message from Mum at all. It's a mess. It's a um, a scam that's going around where there's messages being sent to phone numbers saying, "Hey, Mum, I'm just I'm just texting you off a um, off a mate's phone. I've dropped mine and smashed it. Um, can you send me some money? Here's the account, or join up with WhatsApp." Yeah, sorry, honey, not doing that because I know it's a scam. So if, if you get that on your phones, please be careful. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Just double checking my stitches. So that is row 68. Is that right? 66, 60, 66, 67. We're about to do 68. I've already pressed the button. All right. So, and is that right? Yes, because I've got two single crochets to do first and then a double so that I know that I pressed the button before I was ready. Don't do that. Oh my gosh. All right, so let's go. We're going to go um, our um, even row repeat. So single crochet, single crochet, double crochet into the next, single crochet, double crochet into the next, single crochet, double into the next, single crochet, and because it's an even row we're going to single crochet again, two in the last stitch, one, one each in the last two stitches. Okay, so we're going to chain one, turn our work, we're going to do row 69 and row 70 is where we're going to put our buttonhole. Man, I can't even pick up the yarn today, seriously. 68, so we're on to 69. So it's, again, it's, a, it's an odd row, so we're going to single crochet first and then double crochet into the next. And a single, and a double, single, double, single, double. And a single. Okay, we've got three rows to go. Okay, so we've got our nice color change there. Very opalescent, these two colors together. All right, so I'm going to chain one, turn my work. Which way I'm going to flip it? Press my button. So we're on to row 70. <coughs> Have a sip of coffee. And row 70 is our buttonhole row. So what we're going to do is a single crochet. Double, uh, no, single crochet, single crochet because it's an even row. Lucky I've got my hand scribbled notes here. Right, oh. Single crochet, single crochet. And then we're going to do a double crochet. Then we're going to chain three, one, two, and three, and we're going to skip three stitches, one, two, three. So into the next one, we're going to double crochet, 
so it's mirroring the other side. And of course, again, because it's an even row, we're going to two single crochets to finish. <coughs> single crochet, single crochet. Now you can make um, that buttonhole bigger or smaller. We're about to chain, um, we're about to stitch over the top of that so it makes it, it strengthens it. Um, but because we've got a row count of nine, it's easy to do three stitches, skip three, three skip, three stitches. Okay, so you just need to make sure you've got a button that's big enough to sit in there and not too big that's going to stretch and not too small, it's just going to pop right through, right? Okay, so we're going to chain one, turn our work, press that button, so row 71, and we're just going to single crochet. And we're going to double crochet. So we're just going to complete our row across. Did I press the button? No, I didn't. Um, it doesn't matter at this point. We're, we're almost done. We're doing this row and then we're doing a final row. So it doesn't really matter if you don't press the button. And we're going to go into this stitch. It's just single crochet. And then we're going to do our double single double we do a single into the next stitch and a double and a single Okay, there is our buttonhole. Now, what we're going to do, <clears throat> last row, we're going to chain one, turn our work, and we're just going to do a single crochet across the top into every stitch. Again, we should end up with nine, because that's been our count for our handle. One, two, three, four, Six, seven, eight, and nine. And we're going to finish off our work. So there's our handle. So we're just going to pull that through, give it a snip, and pull it through. Pull that really tight. Okay, so that is our crochet hook part of it done and dusted. Alright, so what we're going to do is we're going to sew in our ends. So I'm just going to use my darning needle here and trim my end off. So the easiest way to thread, even if it's got a smaller um, eye than this, this particular darning needle, is if you fold your yarn, cotton thread works the same, in half and then it will fit through the yarn because then it's not trying to work in through all of the all of the um, ragged ends. Okay, so I'm actually going to go down into this stitch and into here. Um, it doesn't really matter where you go, just again make sure that when you do this that you can't see your needle on the other side <coughs> because that will change the look of the thread. And again, don't pull it too hard. We want that corner to be nice and um, square. And I'm just going to go under some of these stitches here. Probably right across the buttonhole. I think I might have to check, make sure I'm not on the other side. Nope, can't see my needle. And pull it through. And I'm just going to go under this one and back through the other way. It's just going to fortify that um, buttonhole as well. But you can you can place this anywhere you wanted to. Oh, it's okay, take one out of that one. Yep, no needle, beautiful. 
two, three times will do it. I'm quite happy with that. I'm just going to go, which way are we going here? Just going to go back through just to, just even, probably even to the centre. And I'm going to give that a trim. Snip. Okay. And then we'll go down and fix up the end on the other side where we started, right back down at row number one. I'm going to do the same thing. And just going to go down through that very first stitch we did because we want to close that gap up and I'm just going to go and find some stitches here okay so I'm here and pull it through again don't pull it too tight we don't want to just okay so computer says no <laughs> and it cut me off so I've sewn in the end this end um, so we're, we're ready for our button um, to be sewn on so in the other end as well, which is what I did on the video that didn't work. So um, there you go. And now all we've got left to do is pick a side, which side looks the best, especially with this cotton, because sometimes, like I said, the yarn splits. And it doesn't really matter with the, but pick a side, which side looks better. I actually like that side better for the um, buttonhole. So what we're going to do is we've got a row of lace stitches in here and we're going to line up at the top, our buttonhole, the top of our handle with this row here. <coughs> I'm just going to use my darning needle to go through like that because then I know that that is where I'm going to sew my button. Now I had, couldn't decide whether to use a, this button which I do kind of like, or this button. Let's have a look. What's better, that one or that one? I'm kind of liking this one. So I'm gonna go with this. Okay, so um, none of my purple cotton actually matches with my yarn, with, with the yarn or the button. Um, Pick one. This one will do me. <laughs> it will be fine. So we're just going to thread our needle. And anyone who knows me knows that I hate sewing with a passion. So this is not a fun job for me. <laughs> we finished the fun part. And so I have a tiny little needle over here. It's tiny compared to what we're usually using, right? So it's just a normal needle and I'm just going to thread it. I can't see what I'm doing but for some reason I seem to be able to do this without a problem. No. It's in there. Oh yeah, there she is. I surprise myself every time I thread a needle. I really, really do. <coughs> Okie dokie. Probably could have done all of this off camera, right? Just going to double knot it. And snip off that end. Okay, so where my darning needle is, is the middle is exactly where I'm going to go through. So I'm actually going to up in that stitch beside don't pull it too tight pop my button on and that's where it's going to go so I'm just going to go into the stitch into the actual yarn beside it no good going between stitches I'm just going to pull that through all right and then I'm just going to do this oh, wrong one Probably four times. So it'll be five in total, so that's one. Two, making sure that I'm actually going through the cotton, the yarn behind the button, not going through the space. 
is going through the space is just not going to attach the button to the yarn. Just going to go one more time. Alright, flip her over. Tie off my yarn. And I like to go underneath the threads I've just done to start with. One and two. And snip it off. We are done. Do up our button and let's go hang it up. snip those off a little bit closer than that. Okay, do up our button into our handle. That's really cute, I like them. See if I can zoom out. I'm on the mess on my table. So there is our hand towel made with Lion Brand Comfy Cotton Blend. Um, it goes with our dishcloth that we made the other day. Uh, and that's our patterns for um, our January project. I'm not going to do the scrubby. Like I said, I um, I did it with the blue. No, I will. I will do it with the scrubby because I bought the loofah to go with the purple. We'll see how it goes. Um, if it works, I'll do a tutorial. If not, mm, um, I might just do it straight out of the comfy cotton without the scrubby in it. But we'll see how we go. Um, I, as I said probably a couple of times throughout this video, I have really enjoyed making this. I, I love them. Um, my The blue one is here. So that was the, my, the one I came up with with the pattern. Lots of hit and misses with that, I have to tell you. But... Um, there we go, we've got opposites <laughs> and they match quite well. Um, if you wanted to, if you're giving them as gifts and you wanted to block them because they do tend to curl, um, you can block it so that the corner doesn't curl. But they basically sit pretty straight and I'm really, really happy with that. I hope you'll give this a go. Um, I, I love mine. Like I said, I'm going to take this one to school, um, leave this one in the kitchen. Um, I'm probably going to make a couple more, some for the bathroom. Some for outside near the tap. Um, I'm a little obsessed. The stitch is lovely, the yarn is lovely, uh, and I hope you've enjoyed this. Thank you very much for joining me, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.